So if you watched any of my Madden over the last uh, couple of weeks, you might know that I really struggle with a specific play in my offense. And I wanted to do a video today to talk about what to do when you can't execute. What to do when it, your offense is just, like you're just missing a step. How do you improve at execution? And really, um, if, if you think about it, it's really just doing the right thing at the right time repeatedly. It's, it's not necessarily that you can get better at um, it, it's not necessarily that you can get better by repeating a bad pattern, but you have to change the pattern and you have to kind of like form that repetition into your mind, okay? So the play that I have really struggled and the route that I've really struggled to work is this play Durham out of my bunch strong offense. If you guys want to learn exactly how I run this offense, make sure you join the Patreon. I'll put a link to that in the description. It's only 10 bucks. Get you access to all of my Madden offensive and defensive eBooks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what I do whenever I am struggling to learn or master a play. And this is what I recommend in any game of Madden, in any offense or defense that you are running, the building blocks for your scheme, okay? The building blocks for your offense or the building blocks for your defense is basically this. I'm going to run this one play as much as possible in this one game, and I'm going to try to learn why or what stops the play. That is basically what I'm gonna do. Now, the uh, there is a level of intentionality with this that I did wanna go into because it's not enough just to go on to a game and run a play. Like, you will get better. You'll get better if you than if you didn't do that, but you won't become the best, okay? You won't be, you will be kind of leaving some, uh, you'll be leaving some learning on the table uh, is what I would like to say. So what we're gonna do is we're not only going to run the same play over and over again, to try to learn the ins and outs of that play, but we are also going to intentionally, every single play, talk through, think through our pre-snap progression, and we're going to try to not only do the right thing, but we're gonna to try to do the right thing at the right time, which is the core of what creates and or is what exemplifies uh, skill, okay? So the right thing at the right time, but also just slightly more uh, on that topic, we are going to try to do that without mistake. Uh, and so that, that's kind of the, the whole idea of the video today. Defensively, we're going to be running our dollar defense. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, but I really want to talk about, again, just the idea of like mastering uh, a certain play. So there's so many things that go into mastery. It's not just making the right read. Like I said, it's making the right read at the right time. Uh, but it's also another little element of this is throwing that we face in Madden is throwing the ball the right way, right? Throwing the ball the right way is, is critical. Throwing, uh, understanding that, understanding how your, your timing on the post snap reads, like what do you read first? What do you read second? What do you read third? Those are all things that we need to learn. Those are all things we need to, through practice, through training, through repetition, through intentional repetition, uh, is how those uh, that skill uh, will be developed. So that's kind of the, the whole idea of, of today's video, and hopefully you'll get something out of this because this is truly how uh, you, you, you create muscle memory or like what I would, it's, it's actually the, the, the scientific term for this is this is how you uh, basically create myelin within your brain that is going to wrap around your uh, brain to tell you what to do, when to do it, and how quickly to do it. What to do, when to do it, and how quickly to do it. That is super important because if you think about it, if you're ever trying to learn a scheme, you're ever trying to learn a new offense, a new defense, whatever, one of the biggest challenges is the is not only the fact that repetition, but one of the bigger challenges is like you just don't understand how all your routes work together. You'll, you'll, your reads will oftentimes be slow. You'll be slow on reads. Another thing that will happen when you're trying to kind of do what I'm talking about in this video, where you're trying to learn, is you, it, it's, it's okay to be slow because you have to be. Uh, you want to break the play apart. You want to identify and, and uh, learn the fundamentals of the play. But then there comes a point at which you want to have that execution uh, where all of the circuitries in your brain are firing at a high level 
of, of competence, right? So that is that is another little little factor here as well. So I kind of was trying to get him to throw that. I, I was hoping I'd get a, a lurk on that. I think I've played this guy before. He's not bad. He runs pretty much the double post stuff, uh, which is really good. It's actually bad red zone defense there by me. And, uh, yeah, I give up seven. So, again, the main purpose of this video is offense, but I did want to let you know that we are working on some cool stuff out of 3-3, three, three, or not 3-3, three, three, but 3-4 three, odd. Uh, I think this defense is better than 6-1 in the red zone. I think it's got a better blitz than 6-1. I think it could be its own standalone defensive ebook, And so we're working on putting that together for you guys. Um, I've been kind of tinkering with this defense for a long time, and I feel like the more I look at it, the more I'm like, ah, this, there's something here. Uh, the, the thing I've loved about 3-4 odd over the years is just the fact that it, the, it brings the safeties into the box so far down that it just it's, it's, it's impossible to get seam streaked on it. And so it just kind of protects your user. And if you have a bad user, like I feel like my user's not the greatest, um, you know, you kind of need that help. All right, so again, we're literally going to call Durham until we cannot call it anymore. And the reason I, I put a little caveat there until you cannot call it anymore is because when he stops the play, we are going to, uh, we're going to be taking clips through this when we get stopped, and we're going to be explaining why we got stopped. Okay, so that's also an important element of this. So you see here, he leaves that open. Now notice that, so okay, that's important. Exactly the right thing, exactly the right time. I got a blue pass, I got great timing. So how does that, how's that an incompletion? On that route specifically, on that route specifically, okay, I have to pass lead that. I was trying to pass lead that up and to the right. I've got to pass lead it either straight to the right or even a little bit slightly down into the right. So that's really, really important. My first read over there, okay, he's got it that time. But I've got this streak again. And if, we're, if you're kind of seeing what I'm seeing, a lot of times that solo receiver. So, so okay, I want to talk about my pre-staff reads first, and then we'll talk about what we're seeing with that, that solo receiver. So my, my read here is I see he's pressing dollar. I see he's spreading. The blitz does not come in as well if they're spreading. But I do obviously ultimately have to set up some pass protection here. So, you know, we're just going to do kind of standard double team here. But I'm going to look to this flat, and then I'm going to look to the streak. So look to the flat, not there. Look to the streak, not there. But look who is there. That route's open, and I get a KO. So now, I, you know, the play didn't work, right? So what I'm going to do, and this is really important. This is, this is the main thing of the video. I'm going to go in and look at – I'm going to clip it, and now I'm going to look at this and say, what was open? Well, as we look at this, I made the right read, but I threw it kind of at the right time, maybe got a bad pass lead again. So – there you see, see what I'm saying? So that's that's really, really important for understanding, okay, how, not only like, okay, I got stopped. It doesn't mean the offense is bad. It just means you need to make a better read. So you see here, he goes with the cloud flat. I hit my drag, get up field, and you see bada bing, bada boom, and now we're in the red zone. Now, this does not apply to the red zone. Um, and the reason why I don't apply this to the red zone, you can apply it to the red zone. But the reason I don't apply it to the red zone is because the red zone is the hardest place to score in the game. And if you're playing a competent Madden player, you know, you can't run Durham in the red zone because the streaks will run themselves out of bounds, right? So uh, that's that's a really important little caveat uh, to this. So my red, like when I say red zone, I mean from about the 10-yard line and uh, inward. Try and juke out here. Just get a couple easy yards, see what we got. Go with a little flip, a little flip rooski. Uh, so my red zone offense, honestly, isn't the greatest, but I feel like I got some decent concepts. Um, this one I actually kind of like. I'm going to do tight end corner, and then I'm going to do hitch, and I'm going to do a streak. I don't know. This is kind of a random route combo. I'm mainly looking for the right side here, and, of course, he gets stuck. I'm going to throw it. That was stupid of me. Ah, that was so dumb of me. Uh, I let myself off the hook in the red zone, and then I just made a stupid mistake. Oh, you got to throw that away, dude. So again, and, and again, it's not enough just to say I messed up or my offense or something wasn't open. You have to, have to, have to force yourself to think about why did I mess up? How can I be better next time? Those are critical to the learning process. Um, those, in fact, are most critical. So when you make mistakes, you've got to identify, okay, why did I make a mistake? Okay, that is so important. And then you have to actually think through when you've identified, okay, this is why I made the mistake. Like right there, I should have thrown the ball away, I did it. So now what am I gonna do next time? I'm not gonna do that, I'm gonna throw the ball away. I'm mentally telling myself that. And then when I get in that situation again, I'm gonna tell myself that again to try to again, you know, basically just 
it's just really, really important. Hopefully you're seeing the idea. You, you've got to force yourself to create the muscle memory. If you don't force yourself to create good muscle memory, you will create bad muscle memory. Okay. It's just the way it works. And the reason I'm saying that is because I'm guilty, uh, just as guilty as anybody. As over the course of my Madden career, I'd be like, ah, oh, yeah, I threw a pick, but no big deal. I'll just get it next time. No, I've got to get better at it. Right. So that's the whole purpose of, of this is the idea of like, how do you actually get better? You have to rep, rep it. My, my old football coach used to say this. And at the time I just didn't really put much, uh, I just didn't really give much, much, uh, thought to it, to be honest, but he would say all literally all the time, uh, practice does not make perfect, right? Perfect practice makes perfect. That is so important. Uh, that is so important as I drop a pick, perfect practice makes perfect. You don't, it's not just enough to practice. You've got to practice the right thing. Uh, you've got to practice the right way. That is so important. And I, I know I'm like really drilling on it, but it, it really is. It's, it's, it's the most significant part uh, that I could, that I could impart to anybody is you have to do the right thing, but you have to do it all. Like you have to do things right all the time. You don't do things right once in a while. You do them every single time. Okay. So right there, uh, I went with the C route. I kind of like that was honestly bad on my part. I, I, I should have known that was coming. He's kind of he kind of was a, he's kind of giving it away. Um, he's been running a lot of wide trail uh, when we come out here. So I'm also kind of really slow on my adjustments. Part of that's because I'm talking. See, I'm gonna go back to this. Pretty good defense. Yeah, he's been running a lot of wide trail. So okay, uh, let's talk a little defense here while we're while we're on the topic. So again, part one of the biggest elements of defense is understanding what they can actually do that uh, can hurt you. That's really, really important. So I'm trying to think through mentally, okay, what can he do that can hurt me? Well, he's got his uh, bunch to the wide side of the field. So guess what? That's double corner. That's why that, that, that those combos are what he's going to hit me with. The thing that doesn't work as good to the wide side of the field, at least in my opinion, is the wide trail, uh, the wide trail play uh, with the post. So guess what I'm doing? I'm double Mabling over there. And then I've got a deep third in case he does, uh, in, in case he does go uh, with that. And then I've got a little vert hook here. The reason I got the vert hook is just because I think the vert hook will play the drag long enough um, to, to be able to kind of take that away. So you see here, here's double corner. I'm going to get back to that, force that throw. That's pretty good defense. And we're playing pretty good. Defense is a little bit harder because you can't just, I mean, it, you can, but it's, 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 it's kind of difficult, um, in my opinion, to to do the same thing every single time on defense because you are in a roundabout way. Like you have to kind of like, I don't know, like for lack of a better word, I'm trying to think how to word it. Can I get a KO there, please? I got to use of that fourth down 10 situation. I got to use of that um, on deep. So, okay. So now he's short side. So real quick, just want to explain. Uh, he's not letting me have any time to explain it, but uh, I just, I'm slow on my user. Honestly, I'm just playing bad user D not really mad at the defense. The defense is fine. I just got to be better. Okay. So he's going to bunch. Going on a little run. There's just so many factors, guys. Like you have to think this stuff through. And a little bit of it is like, he's kind of, when they go fast like this, I think it just makes it harder on, uh, on you. That was terrible defense. He should score. He's got a free touchdown. He will. Okay. So back to offense. Okay, I'm not going to talk too much about defense here, but 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 what I have to do, and, and this is what was happening on that drive, situationally, I wasn't guarding the, the only routes he can actually throw. So on defense, you're like, okay, it's fourth and 10 was really where I, I screwed up. What can he actually throw that's going to get him a first down on fourth and 10? Well, he's going to throw a seam streak. So I got a user that, right? Uh, that That's important. Instead, I take a drag route where I could probably rally and tackle that. So situation situational usering is, um, is, a, is part of this. Okay. You've got to have that. All right. User, of course, my controller battery is low. Why wouldn't it be? Let's see if I can plug it in here. All right. So back to Durham, cause we got to learn this play. So my pre-snap read, I'm looking to the left side. If I can throw it, I'm going to throw it. Then I'm going to quickly come back to the right and peek this fade. If he has a step, I'll throw it every time. Then I'm trying to work back to the running back uh, and hit that route. So we look left, not there. Look right, not there. Okay. And I actually have that. We'll high point that to get it over the top of the defender. 
and were able to throw it. That was kind of sloppy. I would say that was slow read uh, because you've got to, the thing about these peak, these peak routes is you've got to get off of them quicker. Uh, that's, that's the mistake I make a lot. You don't want to just keep looking there. So look left. Okay. He's there, but there's nobody guarding the running back. I got to throw that quick. That's an example, right? Doing the right thing, but you got to do it at the right time. You've got to be quick. You can't just, um, you can't just, I, I am so guilty of being somebody that makes the right read too slowly. Uh, so how do you improve your speed? You have to force yourself to improve your speed. Okay. So I'm looking right, not there. Look left, not there. Throw away. Throw away. I didn't set up pass, bro. He got the pressure. In the process of looking to the right and left, you are trying to kind of peek, like, are you getting screamed at or not? Um, that is kind of important as well. So just keep that in mind. So double team here. He backs off that guy. So now I'm reading out here to the right side. Look out there. Okay. Hard flat. Okay. Who's open? Boom. If the user runs to the running back, you've got to throw the post. And this is, I mean, I've thrown so many picks on this over the last, uh, over the last couple of days. So this is why we're doing this. And this is a drill. 100%. I don't care if I win the game. Boom. Boom. Hook curl there, but now I can throw this to the sideline. Possession catch. That time we didn't get the same KO. Why? Because I waited on it just a little bit longer, and I was able to allow the route to develop and be able to throw it, make a good pass. Okay? Now, uh, we can get into a little bit of a debate here. But personally, um, this is why I don't actually love C.J. Stroud. Uh, the more I think about it, I'm kind of probably going to go. <laughs> That's why you just got to throw RPOs, man. They, there's, nobody knows how to stop RPOs. They're, they're all lying if they tell you know how to stop RPOs. They, they, in my opinion, you just use the RPO because uh, they just don't react in zone. He should have picked it off, honestly, but whatever. We'll just throw it out there. Again, I throw everything out in the, in the red zone. So this whole thing is now what you could do is you could say, okay, I want to work on a red zone play, right? You could do that if you wanted to. I don't, I just want to score. Cause I want the game to keep going. Cause I want more reps. And this guy is fairly decent. Like he's, he's actually like playing, like he's actually doing some stuff and he's scoring with me. He's, he's running meta stuff. So um, it's actually like, okay, this is a pretty, it's not, a, it's not a, uh, you know, it once used the word great rep, but it's a good rep. Uh, to get in. If someone was just coming out here and cover one every play, it'd be a little different. But anyway, okay, so bunch offset, uh, back to defense. So situation, we uh, normally I would clock there, but again, I'm just trying, again, we're just trying to get reps here, so it's not a big deal. So he's running bunch. So what's he going to run? Middle of the field. He's probably going to try to hit, uh, I don't know. They'll run all kinds of things, honestly. This is kind of my main defense for bunch. So I'll just stay pretty basic here. I would rather, uh, this is my personal opinion, uh, I would 100% rather defend, that's that's a great defense, and I don't even need to go lurk that because that shaded down hook curl will play it. Um, I would totally rather play bunch offset than bunch strong, 100%. I feel like bunch offset um, just doesn't have everything that bunch strong has. Here I'm going to, every time I try to send pressure, he does a stupid run play, <laughs> like, which is fine. All right, all right, all right. I'm getting kind of trying to force a stop here. Not force a stop, but just get a little more aggressive. I feel like I don't blitz enough, personally. I just I just feel like I should blitz more. Um, I, have, I have a really good blitz. I should use it. <laughs> so we're going to send it. Because a lot of the combos in Bunch, they just take a long time to develop this year. So you see, he just kind of chucks something up there. That's a KO. You know, like, yeah, I mean, and he's using Josh Allen. I mean, the very fact that he's using Josh Allen is like, okay, this guy is not 100% like up to par with things. So. Okay, so short side, I like to use curl flats. I don't like to use hard flats on, on short. The reason I use curl flats on short side is because they'll play the short corner. Um, if they, if they'll play, they play corner routes pretty well. Um, let's see here. I'm just trying to recognize the route stems. And of course I say, I don't use, uh, I shouldn't have used a curl flat now that I think about it. Cause I didn't even think about that. And that's where like, okay, the learning process, identifying what they did, why they did it, why it worked. Right. Really important. You have to identify the why. If you don't, it, you're, if you don't know why, then it doesn't matter what. Okay. That's really important. So we're using a hard flat here. Why? Because we need that to guard the running back late. And then we need to, now here, where do I need a user? I need to get over here to the left side, take away that. I got to come back here. He does have that, but that's a KO. I feel like that should have been KO'd. 
but whatever. Uh, and he's moving and grooving here. So what we're going to do, he's going to go to Bunch Strong. So what are we anticipating? We're anticipating double corner. So guess who we're manning up? We're manning up the tight end. We'll see. Doesn't do that. He goes to trail. I'm going to leave that and see if he can make that throw. That's a, To me, like just me running that play, I feel like that is the hardest throw in the game to make is that crosser out of dagger. So if I want to give something up, it's that. Now, situationally here, this is important. Situationally, we're sending people. And then we're going to try to just get like maybe a random, like he just makes a mistake here on the left side. And I'm actually going to use her this guy. And he has a touchdown. Let's see if we throw it. Yeah. Oh, I caught. Oh, I almost caught that. Okay. So he gets kind of a cheap three. No big deal. But what I'm, what I'm getting at is in the half situation, just with, it, with the way he managed that clock, it's hard to score. Uh, it, it's hard to get it all back in one play this year. It just is. It's hard. If, you, if you're playing someone that actually understands why defenses get beat, I was hoping he'd miss that. Why defenses get beat, they can then, like, equip their defense not to get beat. That's the idea. So, uh, anyway, he gets bought half, which is unfortunate. Uh, unfortunate. But it is what it is because I threw that stupid red zone pick. So think this through, guys. If I don't throw that red zone pick, it's probably 17 to 14 with me elite in the lead. A lot better situation. So just, just a mental, complete mental mistake uh, down inside the five. And you can apply the same principle that I was just saying as far as like just running the same adjustments every single time. You can do that. Um, you can certainly do that on defense. I would just say, I just think it's harder. It's harder to do that. Um, Here's a run. I was kind of anticipating that. When he's in the middle of the field, and a lot of people do this, but when they're in the middle of the field, a lot of times they're gonna um, they're gonna run the ball to try to get on a hash. Okay, so wide side. What does he like to do to the wide side? He loves to throw this C route. So I'm gonna man this up, and then I'm just gonna go use her. This that should have been a pick. I cannot believe that's not an interception. Uh that is terrible. All right. I love to back off the curl flat with a quarter. And then I got to watch here. He loves to run uh, that dagger play. So I'm kind of looking at the routes. Take that. Come back here. That's a pick. I finally caught the ball. It's a miracle. So you see how I've adjusted. It's basically the same. It's, it's a very similar defense. Very minor adjustments. Well, what I've done throughout the course of this game, especially in that last drive, is I started to say, okay, these are kind of his tendencies. When he's to the wide side of the field, he loves to run the C route. Or when he's to the when uh, when he's to the wide side of the field and he goes to bunch nasty, he likes to run the dagger play. Okay, uh, tendency recognition. Okay, well, let's talk about offense now. We got to mentally shift back. We're looking left, then we look right, and then we look to our main concept. So we're peeking both sidelines, and then we're looking uh, to our concept. So peek left, not there. Peek right, not there. Um, running back is kind of there. I'm gonna get out of there. And that was a pretty good user, uh, pretty good defense from him. We're going to run it again. I shouldn't have gone no huddle. I should have gone back to the huddle and actually uh, broken down what happened. But uh, crap, I'm all – I don't want to use a timeout. I might actually need them. All right, get our play set up. Yep, right there. Boom. Okay, let's go back to the huddle and actually break down why we got stopped. Or why he was able to defend this. Look at what's open. Tight ends wide open. So what does that tell me? I looked at the running back for way too long. And then I was too late getting to the tight end. Okay? So just just a little uh, important important deal there in my opinion. Okay, let's, let's get back to it. Uh, I like to... Another thing you could do just for fun if you wanted to, to kind of mess with people. Is just flip your play. Run the same combo. It just, it just, it just uh, messes with their adjustments. I was kind of anticipating him to go back to the running back. And there was just a bad read. The running back was open early. And we can go over that. Um, but the running back was open early, and I way I hesitated. You can't do that. You gotta right. You gotta you gotta build the skill. All right, looking right. Same thing. So we're looking right. Look at that guy. He goes out there. Look at the user. He's late. So I gotta throw that. See what I'm saying? I'm building the repetition. I'm building the skill. And I'm telling as we're, and this, this is a, a great way, like I said, to improve. But as I'm, as I'm telling you this, I'm actually doing it. And, and that's actually scientifically proven that verbally saying what you're going to do and then doing it, uh, you have a much higher success chance. You, you're better off trying to do it that way. Okay, so he's been taking that away. I'm going to get off of it a little quicker. And there it is. Perfect. That was pretty good. Pretty good drive. 
uh, pretty good execution there. And you're starting to see like, as we're getting more repetition, we're able to read it faster. We're able to read it faster. We're able to be more accurate with our reads, actually making, even when we make bad reads, we're just slightly late. We're, we're making the, ah, that's terrible. Oh, you gotta be kidding me, man. It, it, EA just doesn't want me to win. Like I'm trying to talk to, to you guys and then I just messed the kick up and blah, 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 whatever. Uh, it doesn't matter. We, sh we should be okay uh, defensively here. But you see what I'm saying? Doing the right thing at the right time. So I'm doing the right thing most of the time. But when I'm, when I'm struggling, especially on that last drive, we'll give up a freaking kick return. Why wouldn't we give up a kick return? Why wouldn't we, EA? Huh. Okay, so the thing is I'm making the right decision, but I'm not making it quick enough. Okay, that, that, that's the biggest thing I want to say. So now what I'm doing is as I'm kind of, okay, I've got the slow progression, I've got to get the fast progression down. Okay, and we've got to do this again and again and again and again and again. Uh, Aristotle said this, uh, he said, oh gosh, I'm going to butcher the quote. I'm going to look it up. I'm going to look it up for you. I'm going to look it up for you. Um, all right. That's what I thought. All right. Here's the quote. This is from Aristotle. Okay. So, you know, it's good. Cause he said it a long time ago. Uh, virtues are formed in man by his doing the actions, right? Doing the actions. And then he, he goes on to say, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an action but it is a habit. And the, that's a very critical saying because you can be, you can make a habit of being bad. You can make a habit of being bad. And a lot of Madden players do that. A lot of Madden players do that. Okay. All right. So uh, we want to make good habits. So we've got to, we've got to force ourselves to work for them. Okay. All right. So press uh, slot corner here on the right. So we're looking right. No, uh, no flat out there. So guess what? We take it. And why do we look at that every single time? He has covered that for like, like seven consecutive plays. And then he didn't. That's why you always have to go through your progressions. The defense looks exactly the same, which is why pre-snap reads really don't matter that much. Uh, I have to make the right post snap. Boom. No. And I'm late and I throw a pick. Perfect. I'm going to let him score because I want to uh, talk about what happened. Okay. So, again, he's used this basically the same every single time. So, if we look at this real quick, I'm looking left. I see hard flat. Now, I look to the right. I see, okay, the guy's got – he doesn't have a step. So, now what am I looking at? That, that, now, what I'm looking at is the running back. And he see how he goes to the right? Uh, right there, I've got to throw it. I've got to throw it. But my brain is slow. I'm, I'm not getting the timing. And so now I've got, I still have a lot of stuff open, but he's able to run back. And again, I'm late to the running back. That's why, I, that's why I throw the pick. But look, look, I, I can't, I, number one, I can't throw that at that time. But also if I wait, guess who's open? The slot receiver. So again, understanding and, and, and what I would even do, this is kind of a practice that I've started to do uh, pre-snap is saying, okay, this is basically what he's been doing every single time pre-snap. I'm like, okay, I'm thinking, He's been putting this guy in a flat or this guy in a yellow or whatever. So now I'm already like, I need to start thinking through like, okay, what's my, what's my cadence if he does what I expect him to do? Okay. So well, hopefully we'll be better this track. This is how you learn. This is how you learn. If you lose it, it again, it's irrelevant. I'll probably will lose this game. Um, but it, it, it's a hundred percent necessary. Okay. So we're looking at the right side of the field. See what he does. Nope. There. The users it the same way. If I could juke out of there, that'd be awesome. And we see what we're able to do. Again, we recognize what he does, and then we adjust that into, okay, this is how we read it. All right, looking to the right side, backs this guy off. No, no. Late again, throw another pick. Okay, again, see the repetition? I'm repeating the, this is important. I'm, I'm doing the same, I'm making the same mistake. This is what, this is literally why I lose games in this offense. It's because of this play. And it's because specifically of this mistake. Very, very important. So we are drilling it repeatedly um, in order to, like, the fact that he, dude, EA does not want me to win this game. Let alone the fact that we've thrown three picks. EA does not want me to win this game. Not really caring about that. But again, we are what we repeatedly do. I repeatedly throw the stupid running back late. So I've got to figure out, okay, now I've got to go into problem solving mode. How can I throw that better? Because it's wide open. I just have to be quicker on it, right? You could do one of two things. Number one, you could just force it. 
Problem is, you play a good player and you force it, not too good. So number two, maybe I can't throw it in that window. Maybe that's too hard of a read to make. That's an option. Um, so I got to start thinking through some of that. But anyway, let's look to the right side out there. We'll just try to force it here. Able to throw it. And we see. Now, one of the other important things is, as you watch this, hopefully what you're seeing is, you start to say, okay, well, is it worth it to like to, to, for that hard of a read to only give me four yards? It's another question you have to ask and wrestle with. Oh, also have the tight end wide open. That time I didn't set up pass protection. Again, do the right, do this, doing the right thing, guys. You got to do the right thing. So um, he's he's got a threat of a blitz. So he actually capitalized on the blitz threat here. So again, and this is just this is how you get better. This is how this is how it is. You have to do this. Look left, no. Look right, no. He's there. Wait, throw that, and you get a sack. Good good defense by him. That's it. Good defense by him. Now, in this situation, I kind of want to just go to something a little different uh, just to kind of – because I, I just know what he's going to do. So we're just going to do this just to try to give ourselves a shot to throw that. It's the same route we would have thrown. I just wanted to try to, you know, just mess his user up a little bit. But really, we were just trying to extend the game, trying to get a first down there, nothing too much to, to break down. Fourth and 17 is a lot different than, like, first and 10. Because fourth and seventeen, there's only a couple routes you can actually throw. You can't, you can't really throw your drag on fourth and seventeen, right? Okay, so defensive coverage first. So typically that safety on the right's either been in a purple or a hook curl. Left side, no. And I think I can throw this. Yep. Got a KO though on his part, but he did get a legal contact, so we'll take that. We still have plenty of time. I wish I wasn't down by three scores, though. All right, so now it looks like he's almost kind of changing it up, but I think it'll be basically the same. Nope, no hard flat, so we got to throw that. We get that bad throw again. So what did I do wrong? I pass led that slightly upfield, and I didn't even mean to. I didn't even mean to. I know I shouldn't do that, and I did. I did something that I knew I shouldn't do, right? So what do you do with that? Well, you have to, again, come back, problem solve, and you have to work through the kinks. This is, this is when people say, like, and they're, okay, bagged again. When people say, I'm working out the kinks, this is me working out the kinks in real time, in real time, okay? Because this, this is just driven me insane that I feel like literally this is the only reason I get stopped is because I can't execute this play, 100%. So see what he does. Boom, boom, boom. So as you see right here, one of the things I'm recognizing is the tendency of the user, and, and not just his user, this is pretty true across the board, is when they user this, they want to go from the tight end drag to the running back. And what I'm starting to think about from a read progression is I need to be working tight end to post to running back. So tight end, take it, boom. Okay. And we'll see how that goes. So again, and, and that's what I was saying. Like, I might need to change how I design or how I think about my read progressions to counter what he's doing and what a lot of people do to me when they when they are um, defending this play. So here I throw that again. This time we complete it. Why? Well, I didn't pass lead it up. I pass leaded it slightly to the left, or I pass leaded it either horizontal or even backwards a little bit. So like right there, if my left joystick was a clock, I threw that at about. 830 okay just slightly down and into the left but if you throw it at nine if you throw it at 930 it's an overthrow if you throw it at 10 it's an overthrow if you throw it 830 you get a completion so this is like super like i said i, I think this is <laughs> i'm probably gonna lose this game but i hope you understand why this is important and and this i will probably learn more from this madden game today this madden game that i'm playing right now i'm learning more about my own offense and I'm getting, I'm improving more at my own offense. I will do that more in this game than in any other game that I will play today. hundred percent, hundred percent because I'm forcing myself to think through why is he actually able to defend it? Right? Not all oh, I got stopped. Why did I get stopped? Okay. I think it's, it's, uh, I just think it's a really critical thing to, to wrestle with. Okay. So tight in. That's a great, that's a great lurk. That's a great lurk. 
He's just, you know, he's figured out how to stop a wheel route. He'll just use route. I probably had other stuff open there. I kind of hope he, I kind of hope he scores. I want to go, one, I want to go one more time, see if we can get uh, that route. Hopefully he's just playing. I don't know if if he's trying to just run the clock out. It's kind of lame, and I might just quit out. But I mean, I'm I'm dead serious. You you literally, hopefully you're seeing like you're seeing the skill development. You're seeing like. Okay, he's starting to recognize that this is a mistake he's making. He's starting to add in this little this little little thing that's going to make him better, right? Um, hopefully, you're starting to see that because this is this is truly how it's done. I mean, this is 100% how um, you get good at a at a play. You you get good at a play, and once you learn one play, then you add in a second play, right? And then what I like to do, and this is what this is what um, in my opinion, this is how I learn like my power counter type stuff. What I like to do is I'll, 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 I'll take two plays into a Madden game, literally just two plays. That's it. Just two plays. And basically what I'm trying to accomplish here, uh, as I want to kind of stop him just to prove a point. Let's see if we can get a stop. Throw a pick right to me. I can't catch it, but sure as heck he could. Um, I'll take two plays into a Madden game and I'll basically uh, run one of them until I have to run the other one. And what will basically happen is I will learn when to call what and why. Okay. Super, super important. Let's see here. Corner route. No. All right. I'm going to try to run backwards because I want another possession. So again, this is just a rep game. It's nothing more than that. And um, this is how you learn your plays. So when I tell you, hey, this is a really good play, you should then, in my opinion, I would, if I was in your shoes, I would be going into a game and I would be running. I would, I would first run into practice mode a little bit just to get familiar with it. But then I would go into a game like what I'm doing here and I would rep it over and over again. And you have the really important thing. It's not just enough to rep it over and over again. You have to look at it and say, why did I get stopped? Why did I throw a pick? Was it because the route was covered or was it because I made a mistake myself? Most of the time, if it is a good route combination to start with, you will be the person that makes the mistake. And as you've seen in this game, I have had, um, I have thrown the, I, I basically lost the game because of the interceptions I threw and those interceptions were unforced. They were un like, like what I mean by unforced was like, I had other stuff I could have hit. I just messed up. I just did not execute. That's what I'm saying. I probably could have won this game had I executed it every single time, every single time. So there it goes running back. Boom. See what I'm saying? And you're starting to see, I'm getting better. I'm getting better. I'm getting better. I'm getting better. I can feel the, uh, the, the fact that I'm getting better at this read. We look left. Nope. Look right. Nope. There, boom, boom. He commits to the running back. I throw this. Get out of there. See what I'm saying? I mean, this will change how you lab. This will change how you how you look at practicing, how you look at deliberate practice, how you look at being intentional in the game. That's why when when I say and when we release ebooks and stuff, I say I've tested these plays. This is what this is how I test them. This is how I test them. Okay. Um, I literally go into a game and I just rep the living daylights out of the play. Okay, here, and again, this is a little different because we're in this, this kind of tougher area of the field to score. I've thrown for 447 yards and really not played well and made a lot of mistakes. But you see, like, the play can work. Okay, hopefully you see that. Um, okay, so what do most people do in the red zone? They put the safeties in a hook curl. I think I can throw this tight end. We'll bring a drag underneath it. I don't know if I can catch that though. Dang it. Uh, yeah. I mean, th this is the part of the field where, like I said, it just it's just different how you pass. I'm trying to connect it to what we're talking about, but I don't know that you can because it's just different. Jurtle right in. Boom. First and goal. We're going to go RPO because why wouldn't you? I don't know why I did that. I didn't mean to do that. 
See, and that's what I'm saying. Like, this happens. It happens to everybody, but it happens to me a lot. You'll do stuff you never, you didn't mean to do. And what I, what do I mean by you didn't mean to do it? You didn't, you mentally didn't mean to do it, but you, you haven't trained the muscle memory yet enough to, to actually to be able to do that. I was just testing to see if I could throw that. All right, he's going to probably just, uh, you know, whatever, run his plays. about time to be uh, done with the video. But hopefully you see, like, this is the process. And if you watch the tape back, which is what we should do, at this point what we should honestly do is we should go back and we should say, okay, so now, and I'll show you how I do this uh, as we kind of wind this down. But but it's it's just so important. And if you understand this, it, it will literally change how you play the game. It, it will make you a better Madden player literally overnight because you will you will start to say okay now I actually have the tools to master I I know how to go about mastering something and I would go into another game and I would do this again I would I would do this again I'll probably do another video and what I'll do in the other video is I was thinking about this what I'll do in the other video is we will uh, we'll run the same play we'll, Durham will be our number one play so that'll be the play we run the most and then when we feel like that's covered. Like he's he's doing pre he's playing pretty good on it. We'll add in the double corner, and I'll talk about the power and counter concept and the idea of if this, then that of Madden that a lot of people don't understand. Maybe he'll give me another possession here. It'd be awesome if he just punted the ball to me, but he won't do that because he doesn't know that we're recording this. Um, but anyway, I, I don't know, guys. I, I really like this uh, exercise. I know like it, it might be boring, but here's the thing. Um, the air raid offense. If you ever, if you ever, ever, ever talk to somebody that ran the air raid offense, they said we had a great capacity for boredom. That's their thing. They had a great capacity for boredom because they understood that if they could execute at the highest of levels, then you know it, 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 they would win as a result. Okay. Uh, let's see if I can actually draw up a combo. I don't know what I would do here. We'll go post. We'll go curl, which is a really good route. We'll go streak here on the right. Let's run this. Yeah, it just takes forever to get open. It just takes forever to get open. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's just really hard to pass in the red zone. There's combos, but it's just it's just really hard to pass in the red zone, guys. And you, you know, I just I'm not in the mental state right now to do that. So I'm just thinking about mastering this play. So look left, no hard flat, throw left, juke, boom. But yeah, I mean, you see, like by the end of this video, by w literally it took 30 minutes. And and honestly, if we cut out the defensive clips, if I just played like like the, in a perfect world, if you had a buddy that you were doing this with, you could literally just have your friend. Um, you could have them like basically play. Um, what am I trying to say? You could have them play defense. You just play offense. All right. Let's see if I can hit something here. Gosh, the stupid blitz, man. The stupid blitz. Oh, and I did that. I did that, bro. I was so frustrated. Just let me run the play. <laughs> I don't, I he finally got it here at the end of the game. I didn't mean to come out. I didn't mean to fake spike it. So again here, and, and, and this is a little bit more of like, we could actually hit some stuff now. We have a little bit more room, a little bit more space to kind of like go through this. Um, I wonder if you could double team like this guy. I wonder if it makes this stop this blitz. So look left. I have the left throw, but I'm going to hold. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Awesome. All right. We'll see you. <laughs> Thanks for watching the video. Next video uh, we'll do, we'll explain kind of how this comes together with an actual, uh, with a counterplay.